So we're going to cut two strips from this piece of kid skin. I'm going to lay it flat. And we want to figure out how long of a piece we actually need to start with. So everybody's wrist is going to be different. Some people are going to need a longer strap. Some people are going to need a shorter strap. For me, this particular strap, I like the tab to come out and then fold back in again. I don't like it just to be uh, sticking out like that. The traditional way is to have the excess folded back through. So I'm going to go with the original leather piece that I made for myself. If I measure that, I'm just going for the leather at the moment. Not worrying too much about the buckle. Press that down, unfold that end so that you can see where it normally folds. So we've got 29 centimeters there. And if I turn it over, I'm going to have the turnover end just past the last seam. So if I measure that and have a little bit of an excess, we'll say four, so 29 plus four, 33. So we want to make sure if I cut this here, will I have enough? So 33 is about here, so I'll just about have enough. Yeah, so that's okay. Now, it doesn't really matter if you get this wrong, just make sure you have more than you need. That's the main thing, because we can create this, and before we stitch anything, we'll have a massive end. We can fold that back through and then just mark it and then trim the excess. Uh, for reference, let's see what my other hand, because I have a watch on ready, just in case you're gonna copy my exact measurements. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of tension there. That is 19.8 centimeters, which is seven and seven eighths, something like that, just a little bit over. So just under eight. So if you have a larger wrist, you're definitely going to need something longer. If you have a shorter wrist, you're going to need something shorter. So a bit of a mark on the leather there. I'm just going to avoid that. Place down a couple pattern weights. And then just using a rotary cutter, You can zip along one side and zip along the other. So we have one piece, put that to the side. So now we have two pieces, both wider and longer than we actually need. I'm going to zip these through the Bell Knife Skyver machine just to thin them down. Bell Knife Skyver is great for these kind of small jobs. If you don't have a Bell Knife Skyver machine, using chrome leather, that's going to be a real pain to pull that through a manual splitter. It's going to be very difficult to skive that down by hand, say using a French edge or a skiving knife. So I'd recommend getting this in 0.6 millimeters. That's what I'm aiming to split this down to. With 0.1 of a millimeter of our reinforcement, I'm aiming to get around 1.2 to 1.4 millimeters finished thickness. That's going to work for most watches. If you want to find out what thickness you can actually work with and ideally have a watch ready to go. Take your dial calipers or digital calipers, whatever you have, it should look like this. And on the top here you have the ability to measure the inside of something as well as the outside, okay? So what I can do is measure the distance between the watch case and the spring bar. So carefully place that in be very careful doing this on an expensive watch. This is my holiday watch, so I don't mind too much. Uh, we're looking at two millimeters exactly, okay? Double check on the other side. We're giving just a fraction a hair under two millimeters on that side as well. So two millimeters is the absolute maximum. Mind you, if I was to make a two millimeter strap for this and put that through, it would really not want to bend down because it's being squeezed and sandwiched between the spring bar and the watch case so it doesn't want to bend. So having something a little bit thinner is going to allow it to bend a little bit more easily, not to mention it's going to be a very stiff strap, something around two millimeters. I wouldn't recommend going over 1.5 at the most. So again, if you don't have the ability to split this down, buy it in the 1.6 millimeter range. and. Because this is quite thickness sensitive, if you go a little bit over or a little bit under, even by a fraction of a millimeter, you can end up with something that's overall too thin or too thick. So before you get this sent out, ask your supplier to measure it. Don't just buy it online and assume that 0.6 means 0.6. There's always a range that they work in. 
And for many manufacturers, that could be 0.2 of a millimeter. So 0.6 could be either 0.8 or 0.4, which would be unlikely, but that's the range most of them work in. So get them to measure it, 0.6. If it's 0.5, it's still usable. 0.7, starting to get a little thick. 0.6 is ideal. So now we have two strips that have been thinned down and we're left with 0 0.625, something around that. So pretty much bang on. So we're gonna keep one of these and put the other aside for now. So we're gonna take our contact adhesive and begin applying it down. Again, just lightly going over it first. and then firmer afterwards. So there we have it. Our leather ready to make our NATO strap. Next, you're gonna take your strap. Now it's fully cured, fully dried. Take a nice long ruler and we're going to even up that edge before we cut our final width. So a couple pattern weights, very important. Spread the load out. We're going to move this back and in my case I'm going for 22 millimeters because I'm making this for a, a watch that fits a 22 millimeter strap. The space between the lugs is 22 millimeters. And we're not going to build out any thick edge paint on this. So I'm going to have it right at 22. When I see that I'm just going to stabilize. Notice there's no strap under about half of this so the ruler wants to fall back this way. So I place the pattern weights in front on this side so that it doesn't wobble backwards. Just a little quick tip there. So confirm, 22, 22. And now we want to make sure that at various points, especially in the center, we are in fact at 22. So that's great. This is critical this doesn't move, so I'm putting a lot of down pressure with my fingers. and I'm not going all the way through on the first one. You don't have to use a rotary cutter, you can use whatever you feel comfortable using. I'm just gonna confirm we have 22 millimeters all the way along. And we do, perfect, that's what I'm looking for. And you can keep these just in case you need something to test the heat of your edge creaser on. So this you can throw away, but just keep this one if you have enough scrap. Also good, if you want to experiment with a different kind of edge finish to what I'll be using, you can test it on here and test the durability, see what it's like. Now take a look and decide which is the nicest looking side, okay? If it's not obviously apparent, then it doesn't really matter. To me, this should be the underside. This end, the grain is starting to change. So I'm gonna be using this end here to turn over and retain our hardware, making this the nicest side on the outside. So this end, I'm gonna trim nice and straight. And to do that, we're gonna take our pattern. Now, print out your piece, and you're gonna select the pattern that's appropriate for the watch that you're making. So I'll have various different sizes that you can use. And I'm going to place this down on one end. We're going to true up the end because this is a, a perfect 90 degree cut we have here. The other end's a bit rough, as you can see. So I'm going to leave that so I'll know that's my tag end here. And now that we've cut it, we want to prepare the good side, not the, the, uh, the inside, the good side that you've chosen by taking a creaser. I'm using a 1.5. 1 to 1.5 is going to be about right for this. It's gonna improve the look of the edge, frame our stitches, and also give us something to stitch up against as well. All the way to the very end. Turning it around, same on the opposite side. And now I'm just taking a little bit of edge paint on the end of a sponge applicator. And just going over the edges. We're not really building up a thickness here. We're not using it like you would on a, a wallet or a bag. We're just sealing the edges 
with edge paint of the same color as whatever you're using, or a contrast if you wish. One to two thin layers, I'm just using one layer here, and then set that to dry. We shouldn't take too long. Made famous by James Bond in Goldfinger, the NATO watch trap is a one-piece military design that prevents you from losing your watch in the harshest conditions. Designed for wartime use, yet easily at home, matching your outfit, as the strap can be switched out in mere seconds without the use of specialist tools, allowing you to make several in different colors. Normal two-part watch straps can sometimes be tricky to make, with linings, fillers, and fiddly spring bars to stress over. However, this one-piece system eliminates many of these confusing steps. A favorite of explorers and adventurers around the world due to its fail-safe design, you can make yours in under seven hours. Get your video plan now and start your new adventure today. For more information, leave a comment below or send me a message. Hi, my name is Philip and this is the Leathercraft Masterclass.